Wilson, a little Big East double dip on FS1. We're going to start your night out with Providence and Marquette, the third conference game for both of these teams. Thank you for joining us on this Tuesday night. Tim Miles and Lisa Bynton with you. And coach, both of these teams were picked in the preseason to finish fourth in the Big East. They have some positives to build on though early here in the conference season. Yeah, and the Big East has been a bear all year. Here's Marquette coming off a big home win against Villanova and a surging Providence team with three straight wins. Yeah, so let's take a look at the Jeep Grand Cherokee starting lineups. And for Providence, Duke Pipkins Diallo will be your three top scorers again to get the start. Kobe McEwen, so big in the latest game against Villanova, he put up 22. And of course, Marcus Howard, who leads the country in scoring. And he got 29 against Villanova. Always a matchup problem for any opponent that Marquette faces. The dynamic guard, not many like him uh, in the whole country. You know, we were talking earlier today about all the different guys he reminds us of. They're all in the NBA, Lisa. Carson Edwards, like the latest, right? Yes, no doubt about it. But Theo John, Kobe McEwen, guys, Coach Steve Wojciechowski was talking about to us earlier today need to come along like they did against Villanova. And especially those guys in the interior for Marquette will be tested by a Providence team that's known for its physicality. That was emphasis number one again at shoot-around for Ed Cooley, their head coach. They try to go inside to Emmett Holt, who's become almost an everyday starter for Providence. That was a first look for David Duke that rims out. Yeah, this is where Providence makes their money on the defensive end. It's Howard who takes Marquette's first shot. He averages about 17 shots per game. Coming into tonight, he's actually four baskets out of tying the Marquette all-time record. Five baskets from breaking it. Yeah, he doesn't need to be introduced to the basketball. He knows where it is, and he knows how to get it up there, and he knows how to make it. Average is just under 26 per game, and Young gets the first two. Right off the elbow. Coach Cooley ran motion, his first uh, possession, and we're back to his flex action. Providence coming into this game with a 2-0 Big East record for the first time since 2015-16 season. Getting wrapped up, that was Anna. Nowhere to go. And Ed Cooley promising us he was going to bring it in terms of the suit. He's well, got a little Marquette blue, I think, I, tonight. I think that is a, uh, well, first of all, he's a dapper man, knows how to dress, but I, I believe that's a message to the fans here that I'm not, a, I'm not afraid. Here's Howard with his second attempt. That time he's short. Actually shoots better 45% from three than he does everywhere else. Wow. Good start for Providence. And you see they're energized with their defensive effort. These three straight wins have really given them new life. Well, both of these coaches trying to figure out where their teams are at. Providence with some head-scratching losses here this year as Howard takes it inside the lane. Yeah, Marcus Howard can get you so many different ways. Providence is, want to get a, is going to want to keep it out of his hands as much as possible. Three of the four first shots for Marquette coming off the hands of Marcus Howard. We're going to see a lot of bumping and, and uh, physical game. I think the word bloodbath was brought up by both coaches. Well, that's a little bit of the DNA of this Providence program. And Steve Wojciechowski talking to us at shoot around said that, hey, we have to take it and take a little bit, play with a little bit of a chip on our shoulder if they think that they can move us around on the court here tonight. S said something about a finesse team. All kinds of finesse, though, on that shot from McEwen, who picks up where he left off on Saturday against Villanova. I think it's important. Coach Wojciechowski, Kobe, Theo John, Kobe McEwen, Theo John, got to help out Marcus Howard. Yeah, that's the biggest question, right? They were thinking that Kobe McEwen, after the transfer, that he could be a reliable second scorer for Marquette this year. Now seven to shoot. Here's Duke on the take. Coming over is Chuck. It's a great block shot. And Marquette is great at protecting the rim. On the transition, won't fall from Howard. Theo John led the Big East last year in Bronx. That's, that's my fault. I blinked and missed the shot attempt like that. He, this guy is quick. From the corner for three and knocking it down is Emmett Holt. He has been a plus for Providence. 
Emmett Holt, sixth year of college. He also about knocked over Steve Wojowski there. I mean, it was a uh, insult to injury. Not only physicality on the court, but you gotta yeah. keep eyes on the back of your head there I've on the sideline. I've been run over, and I know it was not by accident. Who ran you over? Several. <laughs> Too many to, to name. I love it. Steve Wojciechowski talked about one of the, and, and that I felt like was one of the emphasis to us at shoot around is just playing with that chip, playing with the physicality. Yeah, he, he wants a consistent it. mindset out of his guys. He was down in stance during the whole scouting report. Looked like the Wojo who played defensively at Duke. No doubt about it. And it's off the hands of Diallo last. Marquette will take it off from the sideline. You can hear the coaches calling out the out-of-bounds plays. Watch this, watch that. Yeah, he's got to be careful We kicking your legs out like that. Diallo passes it up, but Pipkins won't. He's been effective from three the last few games for Providence, one of the reasons why they brought him in from UMass. Yeah, Chicago product. And you know when he gets close to Chicago, he's fired up. Marquette is starting out 0 for 4 from 3 now. Yeah, and I coach uh, Cooley here, slowing things down. He loves to attack the paint. They love to attack the paint, but ironically, the first couple of conference games, they've actually been shooting the 3 better than any Big East team has to start. How about that? Yeah. You want to guess that, right? That's more like Providence play that we're used to as Young gets another. Four points now for Khalif Young. Howard on the take, goes high off the glass, nothing doing. Got a push on the rebound that time. Yeah, we go out of this, and of course we see the three-pointer in the corner. And Coach Wojciechowski knows that this is not the defense he wants his guys to play. Visitors ahead of the home team, 9-4. After our first media timeout, Providence Fires come in, as I mentioned, 2-0 here in Big East play. But what kind of Providence team do we have? They started the year, don't forget, with a 4-1 record. I mentioned some of the head-scratching losses that they have, including the stretch that was a three-game losing streak to the teams that you see there. And then all of a sudden, they turn things around on a current three-game win streak. And now 2-0 in the Big Ten play. That coming back right before Christmas on December 21st in Texas. That's when the three-game win streak streak started but you compare it between the first 12 games and then the last three games and they are a much different prior team yeah and in all ways they're defending better and shooting better uh, you know obviously whenever those things happen and, and are uh, having at the same time good things happen Ed Cooley's done a terrific job you know losing to Penn is not the worst thing in the world Steve Donnie is a tremendous coach uh, but uh, great start here with a win at DePaul to start league play so when you look at some of those losses, though, those are some quad three and quad four losses. And then Cooley telling us that shoot around today, because they kind of dug themselves in a hole, they have to take a win or go home sort of mentality with each game that they play right now, even though it's early in conference play. No doubt about it. He, you know, he's getting that urgency out of his guys. The, you know, our backs are against the wall. And he, you can see it in their energy, especially defensively, but just even how they're sharing the ball and how hard they cut off screens or running into screens or whatever it might be. You and I were looking at the stats, a 5 nothing fast break advantage already here for Providence in this game. Duke, step back, too strong. Good rebound there from Jamal Kane, who's checked in. Jamal Kane has done a lot of very good things for Marquette coming off the bench this year. Mark, Marcus Howard uh, drawing the foul. I love a late whistle, Lisa. You know, uh, here's why. As a coach, you'd rather have that whistle later than you don't want to ref on it right away. Well, it's the first on the league white, by the way. So, and there's a couple of guards who are in foul trouble. I should say one guard for Providence who's in foul trouble, Luan Pipkins, sitting out right now. He's picked up a couple. He's really playing his best basketball since transferring over to Providence. A 
First side is some zone out of uh, Providence. It's really a straight 2-3 with the wings playing extremely high. This time without Marcus Howard in, and there's Morrill for the dunk. I know that guy. <laughs> Ed Morrill playing a couple of years at Nebraska for you. Yeah, a tremendous kid, tremendous family. Mom was an all-conference player at Nebraska. Dad played football. We were happy to have him, and, and he decided to come to Marquette, and I support that, and he's really done a great job off the bench. Provides a huge physical lift for them, and that was a great finish. And because of that physical lift, he could get some more playing time here today, in addition to Jace Johnson, too, coming off the bench perhaps tonight for Marquette. Saimir Torrance, backup point guard, has also checked in for the Golden Eagles. An important time here when they're playing without their leading scorer, Marcus Howard, right now on the bench. Yeah, there are other nine deep into the bench. Here's White for three. Providence has actually averaged 10 three-point makes in the two conference games that they've played. They're only hit one here so far tonight. On the transition, Diallo, who's been quiet, takes the contact. Really a good, really good play. Especially when they're on the fast break, they share it, they're able to take it up strong. Anytime you've got a guy backpedaling in transition, you attack him. Here we're backpedaling, you go right at him. There's just no, it's a minor miracle for them to get set trying to take that call, or the ref just blows it. One of those two things have to happen. <laughs> Alfa Diallo will get a chance to complete the three-point play. He's a guy who struggled at the free throw line this year. Well, he does everything else, Lisa. What a career, a lot of expectations. A preseason first team, all Big East honoree, a senior. Ed Cooley has talked about maybe the shooting slump, especially from three and from the free throw line. Said he's a player that's got to try to shoot himself out of it. That's great to hear if you're a player from the coach. <laughs> Goes 0 for 19, keep shooting. And Howard has re-entered 3 of 13 shooting, though, for Marquette as a team. Providence has forced a lot of difficult shots, a lot of one-footed, one-handed runners. Their defense has been outstanding. Good fall for Watson. Long's got a chance here on the post. Up against Nate Watson. Tough angle to get that shot off. Nate Watson, a physical player, Bishop O'Connell High School. Lost it there. Two steals for Murrow already, making an impact with a dunk. And Howard got wrapped up. Another turnover. It's what Providence can do. Out and running is White. Body bucket and one. More fast break points for Providence. It's a little Friar basketball at its best. They're gonna pick your pocket and turn it into points. And Providence has doubled up the Golden Eagles. Providence looking awfully good here to start out to a 14 to six advantage. Let's see what Ed Cooley was talking about in the latest huddle. It's a long game. Continue to do the little things. A deflection, a charge. Uh, help defense, stunt and go. All right? O o opportunity and transition, but positional defense will get where we need to go. Let's continue to trust one another out there. Way to get off to a good start. Stay physical and stay tough. Boy, his coach is exactly on point that their position defense has led to transition. They've got 10 points in, in fast break opportunities to zero for Marquette, and they've only turned them over two times. These aren't steal and goes. These are quick shot, out for an outlet, down the floor, or, or just um, a difficult uh, situation where they have been able to get out, and again, this would be their 13th transition point. But don't forget, at the 17:30 mark, it was tied at 4-4, and that Providence run, a 10-2 run, has stretched this lead out a little bit. Chase Johnson has checked in for the first time for Marquette, going deep into their bench. Johnson is a player who didn't get any playing time Saturday against Villanova. Here he is, draws the foul on a pursuing Nate Watson. Chase is one of those guys that's more of a, a center. And when a team like Villanova plays a stretch five, a guy that can, you know, handle it, shoot the three, do all those things, it's hard in your screen and roll defense and some of those things to include everybody. 
But, uh, you know, he stays right. He's got a great attitude. Came over and say hi to us. And, and let's be honest, that's really all that matters, That's what right? matters. Yes. Or, or do I feel like this is the appropriate response to my presence? <laughs> oh, Marcus Howard, 5 for 8 the first half against Villanova. Three for 18 cents. And we're about to find out more, I think. And he loses it, and, and just no kind of daylight. And he sees all kinds of defenses, let's be honest. Yeah, he's going to see chess, is what we say. What we want to do is have as many guys show their chess to him. So he sees our, then now we, you know, lengthen out, show our length. And Providence has got a lot of defensive work. But he is number one on everyone's scouting report. So what is different right now tonight in the job that Providence is doing with him? And he makes that kind of job. He beat him up, and he still scored three. Um, you know, it's hard to tell because he still might go for 40. Coach uh, Cooley's done a good job on him, but uh, almost to the day, he went for 51 on him, I think, uh, two years ago. Yeah, 52 on, I think it was January 3rd of 2018. Exactly. That was uh, Coach Cooley's line to you, right? We've done a pretty good He's job. Done a great job on him, except the time he got 50. Actually, I think you brought that up to him. <laughs> as any good former colleague would, right? Well, I got the man away. There's McEwen, he can't get it. How about a third opportunity for Marquette? And they rip battle. it away. What a battle. You love to see it. And if the officials allow a defensive rebound like that, that's when things can get a little testy. And that play, too, is what Steve Wojciechowski was talking to his team. Like, you don't have to be the biggest guy out there, but you can be the toughest guy. Come up with the ball. Johnson and McEwen double team in Watson and wrap him up. Yeah, really good double team. They doubled off the cutter. You know, they didn't go one big player to a big player. They, they doubled off the cut. We call this a Laker cut. Kobe McEwen, his man cut through. Marcus Howard denying that pass out allows Jace Johnson to, to get the uh, uh, jump ball out of there. Excellent defense by the whole team. Howard double, or, uh, denying it back, back out. Kobe with a chest double. And then as soon as the ball presented itself, they get it. So they got some good minutes from Jace Johnson off the bench. Some good minutes from Ed Morrow off the bench. And that's your way of saying Theo John's back in the game. And, and I believe he just got fouled. That'll be the first on Young. Theo John coming off a, a really good game. He needed it, too. Not just the team, but Theo John struggling in that Creighton game two games ago. And rallied nicely on Saturday against Villanova. Theo John's high school teammate, another guy you can catch on Fox Sports 1, McKinley Wright, Colorado. Point guard out there. They're high school teammates. Shameless promo. You're learning this TV stuff awfully quickly. I'm working, I'm working. <laughs> White, working to find and hunt down the three. Reeves can't get it. Offensive rebound and a second opportunity here for the Friars. White taking it all the way in. He had a couple of Marquette players flying at him. Now nine to shoot from the corner. It's White, knocks it down. What a melee that possession was. Guys are diving, falling down. Uh, the ball's going a little bit everywhere, and they end it with a great three-pointer with Providence to keep their lead, keep doubling up Marquette. White has upped his averages in the last few games. You see the three-point makes in conference play. Providence leads the Big Ten. That was their second three-point make here of the game. Here we are, late clock. And Bailey lost his footing. Yeah, that's it, man. I got hurt a little bit, but I bet he walks it off. You know, one thing that Ed Cooley said he wanted to do is post up Marcus Howard a little bit. We have not seen that tonight. That might be something to keep an eye out for here later as the game goes on. Well, maybe this is the possession we see it. Maybe. That double team seems to be coming every time they hunt down that corner. And it's a different guy coming. And watch his Steve Wojciechowski talk about this in, in, in his walkthrough today. Here's Theo John. Now that's a big man doubling onto a guard, protecting Marcus Howard. Very good play. Very good defensive play. That's two successful turnovers that they've created on that double team. That'll be the personal, the first on David Duke. 
two-point advantage here for Providence. Eight and a half to play in the first half. And Theo John got caught. Theo John does a great job giving up his body, but sometimes, you know, those guys trying to help out, he just move a little bit. They ran him along the baseline twice. And you can see by his physicality, he'll set a screen. His dad was a tremendous athlete. Well, six points, ten rebounds, four blocks. I mentioned that game that he's coming off against Villanova. And only one foul, too. Not necessarily this year, but in his career, he's been known to get into foul trouble sometimes. And definitely the games you've seen, he's uh, had some foul trouble. He's saying on bad luck, here's Kane on the push. I just left it out there. I didn't make the original accusation. Crowd starting to get into it. A little bit of transition for Marquette. Diallo getting the screen and trying to cross court pass. They got a piece. King got it. Seventeen to ten is your score. Providence pursuing one of the best in the Big East in conference games, shooting it from deep. And on the other end, the transition style it for Jamal King. Marquette trying a little bit of a comeback against Providence as we check in with the Steve Wojciechowski huddle. On the offensive end, we want it to come easy. They're too big and long for us to go. No passes, shots. You got to make them work. And when we're making them work, you have to scream. So if we run cross down, screen them. So you get two on the ball, the next guy's open. Coach Wojciechowski worried about his offense. His starting three guards are three for 14, and their team is only shooting 20% from the field, haven't made a three. Talking about the length, quickness, and athleticism of Providence defense, and when that defense gets set, it's really hard to go against. So how do you adjust? What's your counter? One, you can play great defense and run off your defense. Just kind of get some relief. Two, is he was asking, and you could hear him talking about better screening just more solid screens. We're not solid enough on our screening actions to get the, the necessary advantage, the space advantage that they need. Goaltending call on Theo John. The bucket will count. Yeah, he almost had one earlier tonight, too. I thought they might call it on the earlier one. See, that's probably why they called this. <laughs> still, I still a little salty. <laughs> Officials seem happy to see you. Yeah, that I'm not on the sideline. <laughs> nice little runner, one of those other runners that you're talking about. It's the first bucket for Anum tonight. And, and, and Coach Cooley, no threes, only tough twos. No threes, only tough twos. We heard that a dozen times today. We heard it once. And that's really what they're giving up. I'm a firm believer that threes and turnovers will be the formula to losing this one here tonight. And they have turned it over a little bit. That's where they have five, five turnovers right now. That's the first on McEwen. You are correct. Five turnovers right now for Providence. Four for Marquette. Did you have to qualify that I was correct on something that... Oh, said, not at all. Okay, I was worried. I thought you were always correct. That's what I'm insecure about it. Making up numbers. Coach Wojciechowski cheering his team on. And, and, you know, these are just the games when you just struggle. Oh, Here you have 12 points, 12 minutes into the game, almost 13 minutes into the game. Really good cut and a good chicken wing. Emmett Holt showing his experience. He didn't convert. And he can't get the turnaround. Jump hook the ball. Howard again running into all kinds of trouble. Black jerseys just swarming him wherever he goes. That's a tough break for Duke. Picking up the second foul. His second personal on a just kind of a loose ball that he was chasing down. So Pipkins will check in. He picked up a couple of quick fouls here for Providence and he'll sub out David Duke. And now Marquette in the one and one. 
Marquette's the first team in the bonus yet tonight. That's important, the last seven minutes if Marquette can stay aggressive, keep getting fouled. It's another way we talked about when you struggle on offense. I like to say, drink from the chalice of easy baskets. That's transition layups, free throws, second shots. They're a team that's been a really good free throw shooting team as well. Up until tonight, they only had five misses in Big East play. And it's the second that John has now picked up. Was I saying about foul trouble? Yeah. Every time you see him, he's in foul trouble, they say. <laughs> Only fouled out a couple times this year. Got the four fouls, also a couple times. It'll be Marquette basketball. Yeah, good play, good defensive play. And deep inside the lane, another tough two from Marquette. Yeah, the centers at Marquette, you know, if you went by a 40-minute thing, they're averaging like 5.2, 6.1, and 5.1 fouls per game. And that's just a lot. And, and of course, that's something that they need to clean up. But you've also got three guys that can all play the position, so it's not all bad to use them. Marcus Howard went from one end of the court to the other to chase down that three. The first three made for Marquette. They're looking for a spark anywhere they can get it. Right yeah, can't get it. Largest lead had been nine, but Providence has been sitting on 19 points for a little bit. McEwen with the step through. Good out of bounds play, just getting the stagger out there. They, they tried to extend the screen with, with the defender and pick up the slip with the inbounder, and, and it was an excellent, uh, just got his feet set, and he's just so good, you give him that much space, and you're in trouble. He's got three buckets tonight. Remember, he needed four to tie Jerome McNeil for the all-time. A record in Marquette history. Marquette's done a great job protecting the basket tonight. Murrow with the block shot there. We saw Theo Johns. So Khalif Young will head to the free throw line. Khalif's got a nice touch. He's only about 63% at the line. But those lefties, they just look better shooting at it, I think, sometimes. Let me guess, were you a lefty? My son is. So I'm trying to throw him some good vibes. What's the chance of we're seeing a, a shot, you know, now that the game's tightened up, you think we're going to get Mar Marcus Howard going, maybe a series of screens for him? I think there's a good shot at that every possession <laughs> Marquette gets. Young, by the way, averaging just over four points per game. He's got six in the first half already. So he'll take a seat here for Providence. They give it out to McEwen, who had a wide open look. And that was a designed drive, fake the ball screen, drive baseline, either baseline drive, baseline drift. That time he kicked it out diagonally to McEwen. Very good play by Marquette. He didn't get the basket to go. 0 for 3 from 3 now for McEwen. Oh, nice. Good luck and an easy finish there for Watson. Great little to big cross screen. White served him up on a silver platter. With that pass, you see the field goal percentage. Marquette has been struggling shooting. Providence has made every single shot tough here in this first half. Yeah, their defensive energy has been great. Coach going to slow them down. That Texas win, though, gave them a little bit of a jump. Give them a little bit of a confidence. And it's the way they won, too. You know, they were, they were tough-minded, good mindset. Really galvanized them, I think. White's got seven. Mentioned he's upped his averages in conference play to 10 points per game. Shooting at a high percentage from three, two in conference play. McEwen nowhere to go. Here's Mora, about a 15-footer. Coach Cooley with a stop sign again. You 
try to pressure a little bit if you're Marquette? You know, you're still close enough. You're, you're, you're you know, nine. It was just three. You know, just when you blinked. And just, so you've got to be able to, you've got to be able to just keep going and keep defending. And you don't want to get out of your element. And here we see, that was just a great cross screen and a terrific, terrific delivery by White. And then hitting a the little jumper to take the lead back to nine. For focus. That's great focus. And uh, I have three words for you. Don't have cousins, baby. You like that? That was six words. It's three than three. <laughs> it was either that or I was going to do the quit asking. Kirk Cousins standard. picking up his his a really big win, right? And yeah, and in, that, in, that, in the locker room afterwards. some of the chatter off yeah. of him. He makes a lot of money. Winning the so big game. Everybody then monetizes his, his uh, performance, which is, I, I, that's part of pro sports. But uh, big pass, big catch. But how about Providence answering each time? They've done a good job getting back on track here. That's a good transition on your part. Biggest lead, biggest lead here for Providence at plus 11. It was three just a bit ago. They got it to within three. 19 to 16 was the score at 626, and then Providence had the next six points right after that. It's Greg Elliott. I would swear they had five points in a row. It was six. Oh, 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 but a chance for four. Coach Cooley not happy about that. Brendan Bailey. So when you contest a three-point field goal, you, you've got to run by his shoulder, you know, and he tries, you know, he, you know, he, he had a bad angle, but you've got to, it's like blocking a punt in football. You've got to take that angle. And so it's got to be right shoulder to right shoulder. And because he was coming from the top with a bad angle, he just caught his hand a little bit. And of course, Bingley did a nice job falling down. Bringing some extra attention. Let's see if uh, Marquette can get this thing locked up here by halftime. Seven-point advantage for Providence, who has dictated the tempo and pace of this first half. Watson with nowhere to go. Now eight to shoot as White pulls and fires and hits. He's been really good. Double digits now for Malik White. He's got ten to lead the Providence side and actually leave all scores in this game here so far. The two for three from three. And it seems like every time it's been, you know, that they needed something, he's been the guy to, to pick them up. Part of the success for Providence, these guys understanding their roles. Well, he's a senior, and he's coming off the bench. So he's, you know, you can see just by that alone that if he's willing to accept a role like that and Pipkin's coming in and, and playing in front of him, so to speak, in the starting lineup, that, that he's a secure kid and he's about the team. Meanwhile, Howard and Marquette still struggling. Here's White again, trying to go back to back, not that time. Only 20 first half points for a Marquette team that averages about 78. Anna, nice move, pump fake. Got Watson in the air, can't convert them. Another good team defense and another stop sign from Coach Cooley. We're gonna run another set. Here's White with the crossover. Quick hands from Marquette that time defensively, forcing the turnover. Really should have had a layup there. White even had the layup, and when he drops it off, when he drops it off, Nate Watson just doesn't come meet the pass. So here, he's got the corner. Oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't Watson. It was Greg Gant. Just doesn't come meet the pass. He just he stays kind of out in that space area. And you've got to come in when that defense is running at your ball hand. Wow. Okay, that's just a freshman. How about that crossover move by Marcus Howard inside the lane? Keep running that one, Coach. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a big-time play. That's why we know he's... He, Miles Powell, are right there neck and neck, not only for Big East Player of the Year, but I think National Player of the Year, certainly All-American status. Has now tied the school record for most field goals made. That was his fourth, and the next one becomes the all-time leading. 
726 career field goals made, tied for most in school history. Tied with Terrell McNeil, and he did it in kind of pretty fashion. Oh, man, look at that. Just a little quick crossover. Ends on two feet. Hits the floater off two feet over the shot blocker instead of the one-foot, one-hand variety. But that was just a great crossover. Top five in nine different categories at Marquette entering tonight. I think you said he might even be the all-time Big East leading scorer here at some point. Well, he's got a chance. Howard going for the record. He hit. scored more and has more buckets than Marcus Howard. Pretty cool. Fun to watch, isn't it? The challenge, a hard challenge, and the foul there on Jace Johnson. And one more look at the record breaker. Pure back half make. That's exactly where you want it. Look at that. New school record, 727 career field goals. Jarrell McNeil was a great player for Marquette. Played for Tom Crean. All-time scoring record, though. He broke Jarrell McNeil's all-time scoring record in the first game, the season opener against Loyola, Maryland. Students are, uh, students are in effect, doing a good job. That's the lacrosse men's team right behind the bench that you see. Actually, uh, school is still not in session. Well, we know they're crazy. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a lacrosse game, by the way, but I hear it's a lot like basketball. I don't know how that is. It's more like hockey and football and soccer, but well, somebody said they use screen and roll. Why? Here's White on the push, and he got bumped by Bailey. That would have been just a travesty for uh, Providence fans not to score on those last two possessions where they turn it over on the White pass to Gant. And then here it looked for a second like they might not get the transition. Malik White has arguably been the best player on this court in the first half. You won't get any argument out of me on that one. I agree. He's been terrific. He's been um, uh, just outstanding. Uh, with a lot of different things in, in his poise, and you can see he's, he's expending a lot of energy. He's a tired kid right now. He's waiting for halftime. <laughs> he is. He's got about just under 33 seconds to get there. But if you were to make a checklist for Ed Cooley and what he's looking for in the first half, you might check off a lot of priorities for him. And he's managed some foul trouble with Duke and Pipkins. Duke with a couple, Pipkins with a couple. And Providence still holding serve here on the road with a 32 to 25 advantage over Marquette. Providence and Ed Cooley have made it tough for this Marquette offense and the nation's leading scorer here in the first half who's an awfully efficient shooter, not only from two, but especially from three. Yeah, look at those numbers. Almost the equal amount of t attempts on twos and threes. But look at the amount of points he's got on three-point field goals. It's just a 45%. And we'll show you another graphic later on how his range is phenomenal, too. Marcus Howard. Here's a, from anywhere. Here's a three attempt. That time out of the timeout. Bailey trying to save it right into the hands of Elliott, who goes right down the lane for two. Greg Elliott's first two of the game. Yeah, and you're struggling to score. You, you know, some guys say hold it. White with the step back three. Final shot of the first half. Probably not exactly the way you want to go out, but Ed Cooley's still got to be happy to be ahead. 32 to 27 is your halftime score. Providence basketball at its best here in the first half. Coming up next, it's the Jeep Grand Cherokee halftime report. Rob Stone, Steve Lavin after these messages.
Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and this is the conference game number three between Providence and Marquette. 32 to 27 is your halftime score. Thank you for joining us. We got two to show you here on FS1. Tim Miles and Lisa Byington with you. Well, we talked about it at the tail end of the first half. There's a lot of things that Ed Cooley has to be happy about in the first 20. Yeah, he managed some foul trouble. He got a lot of things off his defense. Fast break points being number one. And when you can go down and, and make a defense pay over and over and, and come up with 12 first half uh, points on, in fast break compared to your opponent's two or three, I'm sorry, uh, you know, you're really at a great advantage. A look at the Jeep Grand Cherokee stat comparison. My eyes immediately go to the three-point shooting here for Marquette. Don't forget, they're first in the Big East this year in terms of three-point shooting percentage. They shoot almost about 41%, but not tonight. Yeah, and that was Coach Cooley all day. He was just talking uh, the way he could. But while they were, there's Malik White, who I think was the star of the first half, of course. And Marcus Howard, even though you didn't think he had a very good night, he's already at 12 points. And we got a figure that with a score like Marcus Howard, you know, the scoring team like Marquette, they're not going to be down as much in the second half as they are in the first half. But that'll be the challenge for this Providence team. Yeah, I, I actually wouldn't feel too bad if, if I looked at those numbers and I'm Steve Wojciechowski because I've got a playmaker of one of the best playmakers in the whole country uh, sitting right there. We haven't made threes. Uh, that we're really not in that bad a spot, only down five. And they, they, of course it goes Marcus Howard's way. He finished the half three for five, and they finished the half strong, too. And Marquette closed the half on an 11 to five run. Remember, Providence had the largest lead of the game at plus 11 with just under four minutes to play in the first half. Pickens has been saddled with foul trouble here tonight. This is his first attempt at the second half. Yeah, I don't think he loves that shot in terms of he being it fully. I love the physicality of both team centers absolutely posting up strong and that creates a couple things one a post feed opportunity and two it, it creates uh, a driving line for those perimeter guys although we just have some more problems with Theo John picking up his third foul his third foul and over the back call with not even a minute into the second half. So that will be an early call here for Jace Johnson. Transfer out of Utah. Expected to kind of beef up some of the rebounding stats that they would lose with the transfer of the Hauser brothers. Stan Johnson, one of the assistants here for Marquette, had originally recruited Jace Johnson when he was an assistant at Arizona State and then reconnected with him when he moved over to Milwaukee. Well, with the way transfers are nowadays, those reconnects are huge. Never want to burn bridges these days. Diallo has had a quiet first half, taking an action inside the lane. Every defensive rebound's been just a fist fight in there. These teams, again, are just battling each other physically. McEwen passing up the shot, looking for Johnson instead. From the corner, it's Marcus Howard. That yeah, was a good recovery, really, by Young taking away that roll, but then it cost him three on the other on the uh, kickout. He's at 15 points, 6 of 15 shooting. Ed Cooley told his team at shooter on if we can get Howard to shoot 5 of 25 in this game and not get to the free throw line, we have a chance to win this. A strong take in two there for Duke. He's got six. Yeah, Duke didn't have a lot of minutes in the first half because of those fouls. And again, he had a tough break on the one, just a loose ball collision. And right now, he's got the defensive assignment here on Marcus Howard, viewed as one of the better oh. defenders. Howard just played oh. the difference. Oh. My goodness. Oh. Yes, sir, they have another. He's hobbling, though, a little bit. The runner taking the contact, and Diallo will go to the free throw line. A quick five points here for Marcus Howard. Yeah, look at these two plays. So he just gets the kick out, coming hard to his right shoulder, and he's cutting off that so hard, really hard to guard. But this play, oh my goodness, again, off two feet, finishing strong. Took a little bit of knee to the side, but I have a feeling when he gets the ball in his hand, he may feel better. 
there are questions about standing at 5'11", if, if he can play at the next level, but when you see him just doing those two couple of plays. And there's a lot more space in the NBA because of the rules of the game. They're completely different games, really, when it comes to plays in isolation. I, I think he'll be fine. There's a lot of small guards in the NBA doing just great. Teron Liu, former Nebraska graduate, who told me, I love a little guard, he'd say, I love them. They're out there. They can, if they can score even better. They stand at 5'6", I love them too. McEwen taking the handoff. And a foul away from him. Yeah, the big boys are getting tangled up. Like we talked about earlier. It's the first on Holt. Well, I saw Purdue play last night. You see that graphic there. That struggles scoring. Mm -hmm. And then doesn't get any easier. You got Michigan. The Big Ten is a... As murderous as the uh, Big East. Here's Howard from the other side. Look yeah. out. Number zero is starting to heat up a little bit. He's at 20. That was just a defensive error. Tied at 35. I'm not so sure Coach Cooley wasn't thinking about a timeout there. Diallo for three. Still struggling. That was his first three attempt tonight. Here's Howard. That's a foul. Done a little bit of everything here to start this second half for Marquette. Yeah, it's like they're in a 2-3 zone on that, and they deny the, the, the ball side pass, and they just they end up filling in behind it and then running to the corner. There's no way the big's going to get there. The third on Pipkins. Who had two quick early ones at the start of this game. And Pipkins has only played 10 minutes. Howard comes back to get it. Defended by Duke. Yeah, Duke he, wrapped him up that time. He wants to go left. He wants to get into his jumper off his left hand. And they are doing a very good job of not letting him get there. That was a point of emphasis at shoot around also. Yeah. Very well coached. Both teams well scouted. Precise, detailed. Uh, players were in tune with what's going on. Very good stuff. Now David Duke, one of the players, as Young picks up the bump. That's his second. But David Duke takes all kind of pride in a lot of things, but defense might be priority number one. Telling me today is just that he just feels like it's just the way you can affect the game, even if your shot's not there. He's an exceptional athlete. He just moves so well, and he's got very good skill, too. But it's nice when those guys buy in that way because that is Ed Cooley's MO, and that's his. Whoa. McEwen, I don't know how he got that shot up, but it's the first Marquette lead tonight. That should get our crowd going. Coach Cooley wanted to post up his perimeter, guys. That's what he got. And he's going to his bench and bringing his secret weapon back in, Malik White. And we showed you, yeah, he had 12 points in the first half. Seven of Providence's last nine points of the first half. Well, he had Marcus Howard matched, uh, but he's going to have to get going here now. <laughs> Keep matching him. 20 now for Howard. Here's two. Rebound to Elliott, who subbed out McEwen, who picked up his third. They get it out to Bailey. And the three-point shooting for the second half has been crucial for Marquette. And you see it in transition. Marcus Howard draws two, finds Brendan Bailey in the corner. Three points, timeout. If you're Marquette, this is it, exactly the way you want to start out the second half. Marcus Howard got him started. Started two for nine, six for his last eight with three three-pointers in there. Kobe McEwen making a tough shot and then transition with Brendan Bailey. And I tell you what, you blink, you think you're in control if you're Ed Cooley. And, and now Marquette with that prolific offense up five.
We talked about that prolific offense exactly. You can't hold them down too long, or that would be quite the performance if you could do that for 40 minutes. Five of six shooting, three of four, maybe the more important stat here to start this second half. And Marcus Howard hasn't missed here to start. Eight of the first 13 points. And more trouble here for Providence as they step on the sideline. And here we go. We're going linear right now, I tell you, Lisa. Providence and Ed Cooley got to figure things out. Uh, Kyle Young was out. They lose to Wisconsin. Uh, Dwayne Washington was out. They lose to Minnesota. Uh, Going to figure that out. Doesn't surprise me that we go zone here. 1-3-1 one, one out of uh, Coach Cooley. Good changeup. For West. For West Bailey to knock down the threes just like that. Yeah. You got to make something happen because these guys can shred a defense. These guys mean Marquette. And there's another one. I think Bailey's got three threes in that same spot. Marquette shot 32% in the first half. They're up to about 86% this half. They haven't missed, or they missed one shot, and that's been it. They needed that bucket. Providence did. Emmett Holt gets it. Yeah, and Lisa's not joking, folks. It's 85.7% the second half. I would never joke about no, something like that. No, don't joke now. Don't start. I already watched Miss Maze while I get all the jokes I need. <laughs> the switch off. It's Diallo now, this time on Howard. Duke gave him up. And Diallo coming down with it. it it'll be interesting to see if, if, if Providence can stay as methodical as they were in the first half. Because whenever a team hits you with a run like this, you kind of feel like you have to hurry up and match them. And, and they're doing a good job. Keep throwing it inside. Play off the post. A good soft touch there for Nate Watson. Yeah, they can't lose who they are, right? You're Even only, playing on the road. You're only down four, you know, but it feels different. We, you and I can feel the energy of the, of the crowd and Marquette's confidence on offense now. And Ed Cooley is a coach who's constantly reminding Providence at every huddle of exactly who they are. Anna passes it up over to Elliott for two. The second miss from three just this half for Marquette. And it almost went in. It wanted to go in. Johnson gets subbed out. He coached up by Stan Johnson there, too. Well, got tangled up there with Duke. Marquette hadn't led in this game until early in the second half. Looking to build on this lead. Here's Bailey. That'll get it done. 12 now for Bailey. Hasn't missed in the second half. Watson looking to go to work. A ball. Turning. He got the contact. Oh, got a piece of the arm. Yeah, that, you know, when I look for a post feed, I look and see, I look to see if the offensive player has, has, you know, gotten some depth to the rim. And there he just turned on his pivot foot and didn't. And, and Murrow goes straight up, but draws the foul. And Providence is fortunate on that one. Ball don't lie is another three word <laughs> uh, thing that I've heard some days spoken. Watson was the one who hit the big free throw in the last game against DePaul. Literally under a second to play, and Providence walked away with a win in Chicago. They've been on the road since that Saturday game. Yeah, Coach Cooley hasn't seen his wife in a week. He wanted me to make sure and introduce. Maurice and Al, uh, Olivia and Isaiah and said, don't forget about me, kids. I, I still exist. I'm here for you. Now, I don't know how his mood's going to be. We're going to find out in the next 13 minutes and 13 seconds. Stayed in Chicago Saturday night, went to the Chicago Bulls game, watched Chris Dunn, former Providence Friar, play, and then took a trip up to Milwaukee on Sunday. 
Chris is really having a great defensive year in the NBA. You called some deep, some uh, close games. Got to watch him, yeah, up close and personal. He gets all the tough defensive assignments like he did at Providence. Here's Bailey for three. He's had the hot hand, not that time. Boy, they missed Murrow wide open down underneath, and, and those are the tough ones. Bailey had the last eight Marquette points. He's had thorough play in the league. Played North Carolina State, 1983 national champion over Houston. Guy Lewis's team. A few, a few other guys on that team weren't too bad. Yeah, talk, yeah, talk about an NBA guy. And he played for the Jazz for a number of years. Yeah, 12 years in the league. Yeah, that number, 12. Thanks. <laughs> I'll handle the numbers on this telecast. Right inside the lane. Got the contact on Howard. And if you're Ed Cooley, you're feeling okay about it. You're getting to the foul line, you're stopping the clock, and that really used, uh, works the momentum. It, it just kind of takes that momentum and, and just puts a wet towel on it a little bit, you know? And now you get an easier opportunity to get your right guys to the foul line. Of course, your guard, not your center. And, and you have to feel like, okay, we're managing this. This is what, you know, how you manage a game. And you're staying true to thine self, like we talked about earlier. And you mentioned just the feel in this building. It is certainly a different feel when Howard went on a run, coupled by Bailey, and, and now you just feel kind of the air coming out of the building and the way Providence plays. Uh, they get this thing right, to, right down to a one-possession game after a free throw make, and you're like, okay, let's press them, see what we can do here, you know? 14 now for one. Largest lead for Marquette had been eight. Now down to three. Pull out of Phoenix, a rescreen. Howard only needs a little bit. Yeah. They want to send him back to his left. He loves to get into his jumper off his left hand, uh, into his, uh, from his left hand into his jumper. And I tell you, he's got range. We know that. Actually, is better, right? the more he goes out. Yeah, it's, uh, the, so young Dan, and if I could say his last name correctly, our ops guy for Marquette, gave me some stats, and, and he is better at the NBA range than he is anywhere else. Well, that was a two there for Howard. Yeah, and Providence has beat him up a little bit. And they're making him guard, sending a double stagger after him there. From the corner for three. Watson battling for it. Nate Watson. Junior, 6'10", 250. He's got about 30 offensive rebounds, I say about, because I think he's got two tonight. And he had 28 coming in. Nine points and three rebounds right now for Watson back the other way. It's Howard. When he splits that ball screen, gets the dribble low, and they come out slow on that hedge. That's the thing about them, though. Just a three-level score. Yeah. Can hit anywhere on the court. Watson again. Turn around right over Morrow. And that was that depth I'm talking about on his drop step. He took that all the way to the midline, got closer to the basket on his moves than, than nowhere. And Watson, who averages about nine and a half, is above that here tonight with 11. That high ball screen coming here for Howard, who will take it all the way, but got blocked from behind. There goes. Marcus Howard has been doing a great job. He gets the split there. They're slow on it. And you can't be happy if you're Ed Cooley. That's drawn out some passion from Wojo. We do not need anybody resting on defense. Six buckets in a row. How about Coach? I mean, his, he's already hoarse. I love it. I love six buckets in a row. Nobody's resting. Uh, he knows that, that really Providence has done a good job managing this big run. That, that when you look at the shooting percentages in the second half, for, for Marquette, they're still 60%, 50% from two. And Coach Woj, hey, talking about 
drinking his fluids today to try and stay healthy, and by the sound of his voice, he's got to keep it going. Well, he's in mid-season form, that's for sure, when it comes to uh, to his voice. you got to do more of that uh, hot yoga to stay in shape. Better him than me. <laughs> You've been in a huddle like that, though, where you're trying to just kind of pull any sort of effort out of your team like they are. A double team in there, Howard. Well, I think the one thing he wants is this consistent mindset, right? This competitive nature. And and I think what happens with with a team that starts to get on a roll and make shots, you relax a little bit. You know, you say, oh, we got it now. We're good now. And you're, you know, three most dangerous words are, I got it, coach. You know, we're good, coach. Uh, no, no, we have to stay on edge and stay competitive in everything we do. Second personal here on Nate Watson. Marquette's answer on that first possession out of that timeout. Take it to the hole. Gray Elliott at the free throw line. And can't convert on the first. It's amazing to be as good a foul shooting team as they, they are. They just have not shot it well tonight. Gray Elliott, by the way, because we're a really good basketball family, has a younger sister, Gabby, who will be playing in the ACC next year, committed to Clemson. Not always that you see a brother-sister combo playing uh, two Power Five conferences. Good DNA in there somewhere. That was that same cross screen action we saw in the first half. Watson has nine of the last wow. 11 now for Providence. And Malik White is setting those screens, and he's got the body to set those screens. He's a physical guard. And anytime you get those little big actions like that, take advantage of you guys. They're totally doubling Marcus Howard now. You saw it on the out-of-bounds play. You saw it on the ball screen. And then that's a tough break because offensive player loses his feet. It's almost like an absolute that the official's going to call that foul. Can't trip him. Coach, uh, Coach Cooley. I think he's looking for an explanation. I don't think he's happy with the explanation. <laughs> There's a lot of unhappiness on the Providence side. That's Diallo's first. And actually, he's having a blast tonight. We're in a blue suit. He's a lovely man. He's just so fun. I had a chance to coach against him when I was at Colorado State. He brought a Fairfield team in. How'd that go for you? I made him $400 extra thousand dollars, I think. <laughs> he got a bigger contract at Providence a week later. He avoided Still waiting. Still real waiting. chilly, by the way, here in Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah. I drove by real chilly and almost stopped. Wojo was trying to get Providence to stop there and have some chilly at 3 a.m. on the way from Chicago to Milwaukee. Sugar House. One point edge here for Marquette. What a move. Can't convert yeah, Diallo with yeah. a second chance. There's Diallo. There is what he can do. And, you know, I thought early in the half he maybe tried too hard to be a scorer. Where he, he's got so many gifts. If he just hustles and plays the game the way he should, that was a great play, and that's what they need out of him. Well, we're set up for a heck of a game down the stretch. Absolutely. Providence taking the advantage off of Diallo Bucket. We got a jump ball. It'll be Marquette keeping it. I've always said any shot at the at the rim is a good shot. So here we get the drive. You know, I don't love this, but why is it a good shot? Because you get you've got the rest of your guys. You've got two guys, the four and the five, can run in there and take advantage of the uh, uh, the no block out because they're helping off penetration. And that's what Diallo does that time. Coming off the game, just scored three points against DePaul. His second lowest total of the season here so far. The phrase he just used, there's Diallo, I think is, uh, is a great way to describe that. Providence needs to see more of that as Howard draws the foul. And it'll be the third on Watson. Well, I think Dave Watson got the worst. He didn't get the bargain part of that uh, foul. He got hit right in the mouth with uh, the shoulder of Marcus Howard. That's 6'10", up against 5'11". Well, Coach Wojciechowski said it doesn't matter how big you are, how tall you are, you just got to have a competitive mindset and a toughness about you. Mr. 6'10", we'll have to take a seat. He's checking on him, make sure he's okay. Watson sits out with 13. Second leading scorer behind White for Providence here tonight. McEwen's been on the bench. In foul trouble gets his own miss. 
Still trying to chase it down. Theo John was the lead blocker, sealing out any help that could get there and rim protect. McEwen just didn't finish to his left. Marquette with a little press now, a little one, two, two. See if they go back man or zone. They don't play much zone. Probably Ufta. Not much. Let's just put it that way. Ufta means not much. Did you live in Mayville, North Dakota? <laughs> I understood where you were going with Maybe that's the scariest part of that whole comment. I, I was wondering why we didn't see more of this in the first half from Mark. Well, you got to score. You get the, you know, the, you got to get things stopped. You know, get to the foul line. They didn't make their foul shots. They were one for four. They didn't make a lot of buckets until the very end of the first half. So I would say that's why. 27 points scored in that first half from Marquette. Duke staying with it. Got blocked by Bailey. Boy. There's been some opportunities for Providence at the rim they have not capitalized on. Dangerous pass, but John chases it down. Here's Howard. Flips it up with the left hand, and John keeps it alive from right back. back. Call that a tap back. Diallo. Better steal. Call that a pick off. And Howard with the quick hands, Providence will keep it. And there's Diallo again, just with his, his mentality and his hustle. He leads the, he's, he's one of the best. Well, you look at the, 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 the things that even all of this Providence team does, they steal the ball like maniacs. They're the best team in the Big East stealing the ball. Diallo's third in the league. Malik White's fourth. Pippen is fifth. I'm sorry, uh, ninth. The average just under 10 steals per game. White got him up in the air and then dishes it off. A great action. That time for Felipe Young. Great action. They had the three if they wanted it. See the side screen, I call it. It's a flare screen there. We just can't cut into it late. Didn't take the three and then hit the big man rolling. It's the fourth personal on Theo John. Shaking his head so far. Lozo not turning to his bench to sub him out. And you're kind of at that point where, you know, you've been taking him out managing all night. Sometimes you got to just let him roll a little bit. Glad to see who he is. Here's Johnson trying to check in here for the next dead ball. As John follows the miss, can't get it. Diallo again with the boards, a quick kick out leading the transition. Kentucky, what a pass, but coming over is McEwen. Wow. Picks up the foul. What a great outlet, a great forward pass, and then how about the closing speed of Kobe McEwen? Like one of those defensive backs from the Saints the other night. That's just great forward pass. Dix is a tremendous athlete to come in and challenge that, even with the foul. To really. Good play, good play for the team. Is that your second reference to the Vikings Saints game? Yes. Yes. I'm thinking I can work one more. Johnson will sub out John with eight minutes to play. McEwen also subbed out. He's picked up his fourth. So both of the players from Marquette who have four will have a little bit of a breather. How about Providence sticking to who they are? Fighting back to take the lead. Providence has outscored Marquette 18 to 6 since they were up by eight points. Eight. Largest lead of the game for Marquette as Howard takes it inside. This will be his first trip to the free throw line. Providence Marquette. Third game of the Big East season for both of these teams. We knew it would be tough. We knew it would be physical. We knew both these head coaches and teams would be ready. Our academic ambition sponsored by SoFi. Get your money right all in one app. Sakar Anum graduated in May with a degree in advertising as a 357 GPA. Now he's working on a master's degree in corporate communications and already appealing for Nike or the NBA to hire him. Yeah, I mean, I like it. Good job. I'm, I'm available if you guys are, you know, Nike, 
or the NBA. I've got time. Ed Cooley called Sakar Anna one of the most underrated players in the Big East. Yeah, and he's really developed himself. Even though his night's not great tonight, he's still with five rebounds, and he'll always find a way to help the team. Uh, he's really a great, he accepts team, he accepts role, and really has improved his skill and just not shooting it very well tonight. Ed Cooley's got to be happy with his defense. After the first four minutes, um, after the first four minutes, Marquette was 5 of 6 from the field. They're 4 of 14 cents. Most in the country. Now 96 free throws made. These are his first, by the way, of the game. And it's one thing that Ed Cooley said, we got to keep Marcus Howard off the free throw line. Well, and now they're double teaming way out because of his unlimited range. And that's allowing him. He's been driving to the hoop and taking the foul. Let's buckle up. Trying to go back door to White, and a foul committed on Howard instead. Yeah, freedom of movement. You got a bonus coming in. Marquette, those are their first two made free throws of the second half. They were 0 for 4 before that. And the first points in about three and a half. How important has Malik White been tonight? So important that it's been tough for Pipkins kind of to stay in this game. Now, granted, Pipkins has been saddled with foul trouble, but you got to ride the hot play. hand. You can't not play White. I mean, you just have to have him on the floor. Something's got to give. 15 for White. Coming off a game against DePaul, where he put in 16 off the bench. Now back-to-back -back games where he's got that mark. Yeah, an average of just under eight on the season. So anytime you get a guy doubling their production like that, you can see a senior stepping up at the start of conference play. Hesitation from Anna, not going anywhere with Khalif Young standing in the way. How about the matchup? Khalif Young on Annan. Shows his hands. Just kind of takes it from him. 18 on the shot clock. Elliott coming to get it. And it's hot. has got the shot up anyhow. Johnson battling. Gets it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. What a great hustle play by Jace Johnson. And the man with unlimited range knocks it down. Marcus Howard. Cuts it to one. Back-to-back -back games, he's gone for 29. And that's what we talk about, the easy baskets. The kick out after an offensive rebound, the points. <laughs> Gallo has not done that well tonight. His short post game, or his long post game, so to speak, where they get in that NBA post. Here's Howard for the They don't call it thumbs down. <laughs> Duke now has 10 with that thumbs up play. Howard has the last 11 Marquette points, but loses it there. Out to White. It's a foot race. That pass. Pretty play to A.J. Reeves. Showing off, and Marcus Howard is down. And I don't think he's, I think he's legitimately, I think he really got knocked on that play. What a great steal. See, he just slips a little bit. Well, he just did it to himself. I don't know if that's a cramp or a hyperextension of a knee. Hopefully it's nothing. And then Malik Young just showing off. I'm sorry, Malik White just showing off. Dropping it to A.J. Reeves. Oh, boy. In a three-point game with 540 left to play, you don't want to see the nation's leading scorer walk out the tunnel. No. 
Let's just hope for the best on that. And another classic Marcus Howard performance before that injury. 19 in the second half, 19 of his 31. So Lisa, who do we think they're going to? Let's ask you, let's flip the walls here. I think Bailey's had a hot hand at times in the second half. McEwen has shown some things, especially against Villanova on this court. They give it to McEwen with eight to shoot. And you want to send him left, because when he gets back to his right is when he's good. Missing everything on that attempt. And Providence will eat up some clock here, or not. Diallo saw a lane. Drew the foul there on the floor. You know, they might chew up some clock. Yeah, well, analytics say that 77% of the time, Diallo is driving right. And of course, on that catch, he rips and goes hard right and gets fouled. And the Marquette, the reason we know that is because that's exactly what the Marquette coaches told their guys today. <laughs> could have just left it at that and everyone thought that you would been no. studying up on your analytics. They would have thought I was making up 77% of the time. I heard it from someone else. I would have said every time he gets it, he's driving right. Everybody in the world knows it. Got to make the foul shots. Let's go. Got a good one. And hopefully Marcus Howard can run back in here and energize the crowd like Willis Reed. Your New York Nick days. A couple of big misses, though, for Diallo and Providence. Trying to protect this three-point advantage. Anna. Watson. Nice ball take by Anna there. That's four on Watson. You know, he wasn't in a great spot, but at least he used the ball fake. He was able to... Uh, just draw enough contact to get that call because he had been kind of mugged in there a couple other times with the hands straight up and not got the call. And that's the way it gets late in the game. This is the, again, like both coaches said, we're going to see a bloodbath. Salem's first free throw attempts in this game. Marquette has left some points at the free throw line. So has Providence. Five of 12 as a team tonight for Marquette. Yeah, it's not like them. But you have nights like that. Oh, here comes the cross screen for the big guy inside. They missed him this time. Theo John did a great job taking that away. Duke will take it instead. The front of the rim. If that's on John, that's his fit. Bodies are flying, offensive rebounds. These kids are playing their tails off. I love it. And look who's back. Lisa. Well, that wasn't on Theo John. We gave the foul to Kane instead. Yeah. That's his second. So John will stay in with the four personals. And as you mentioned, Marcus Howard has returned to the bench. They'll hop in a little bit, and he'll get set to check back in. It's great to see. We saw him twist the knee a little bit, but I was surprised Coach Wojowski didn't usher him to the center line and have him check in. I would have. Just put my arm around him and said, come on, young man, let's go. Well, first I would have said, are you okay? Apparently the trainer said you were close. It's a three-point game. Yeah, only two big ones there. Eight points now for Diallo. What a great and Duke got called for the foul, trying to push off against Marcus Howard. Yeah, he's trying to blow the hand off up, which is you run the same on the on the hip, you lock and trail on the hip of the offensive player, so they can't just hand it up and keep their arm extended to kind of deny it, even though it's a you know a, it's in close proximity. And Marcus Howard does a very good job, crafty, clever guard of maybe putting his shoulder into his chest. So now you get all this contact and you're at the foul line. 
The third and fourth free throw attempts now for Howard. A.J. Reeves going to get a lecture from the official here. He, uh, you can't box out the shooter. You can't make physical contact with him, and he did that time. A little gamesmanship that happens on occasion in a game. By the way, keep an eye on the foul situation. That was Duke's fourth to go along with Watson's fourth. John and McEwen for Marquette have four. Here we go. Crowd on their feet. One point game. From the corner, missing everything. On that attempt is Reeves. Wow. Uh, uh, opportunity. And Duke comes up high. David Duke just out scrapping and hustling. You know, that was a play design where they drive and use the screen, throw it back to a guy, cracking back behind. And David Duke just making an excellent play. You see why his coaches love him so much. Sophomore, 6'5", 200 pounds. Played more off guard than point guard to start the season for Providence. An important free throw here for the Friars. Well, Coach Cooley said if we make our free throws, make our layups, you know, we're going to win the game. We're going to do it all the way to those things. That's been the problem for Providence when they fell short this year. Still with a one point edge. Yeah, he can get to his right hand. He hasn't finished the last two opportunities. You can see a frustration on his face. Just don't let that, trust, that frustration translate into a foul or something silly. Here's Providence chewing up some time. Flex action. Diallo inside. What a take and finish with the left hand. Now, just use his length left hand. That is... Al Skinner was running that in 1982, I think, and Ed Cooley was 12 when he took that from him at Boston College. Oh, it works in 2022. And Diallo's in double figures now. And up for the top. He gets it. Got to switch up. Mistake on that mismatch. And him settled behind the ball screen and made him pay. Defense has got to switch up on that. Change their level. Back to flex. White. No. Looking for a call. He didn't get it. Well, that's the shot they wanted. That's the action they wanted. Finish set up. Alpha Diallo coming off an action here off a pin down, finishing with contact, left hand, and then Scarman settling behind that ball screen. Three points, tie game. We're looking forward to that one, Rob, but we, yeah, we got one to finish here. Tied at 63, and one Marcus Howard with 33 of the 63. One of those nights again for the star. Yeah, he got off. He got that first three. Still didn't do much after that, but in the second half, 21 points, 7 for 11 shooting. He has been outstanding. Scary moment there. He had to leave the game, walked out of the tunnel, but then came back. And that was a welcome sight for everybody in college basketball because that young guy is a special player. It's great to see him on the floor, having another big night. Not he has really developed over the course of years. Yeah, not just one of the faces of the Big East, but one of the faces of college basketball. Of course, deciding not to test the NBA waters and enter his name, going after his degree, and perhaps a championship here for Marquette this year. That's and a design. Out of the timeout, the reverse. Yeah, they... they send Howard off a player screen like he's going to set a ball screen. He slips out of it. Hard right hand drive for the finish. Steve Bojahowski, excellent call to take the lead. Five different oh. lead changes in this game. Yeah, an arm bar up by the throat 
out of Theo John, bumping the cutter. And Theo John is done. Yeah, you see him right there. He's centered up. He's just, and there he lifts that elbow. And it's inadvertent, but as soon as you extend arms in any way, you're going to get the foul. I, I'm, I hope they don't look at it and go to the monitor. But they could. Meanwhile, it'll be Johnson who replaces John. Theo John plays so hard every night out. It's hard to ever be critical of, of anything because his effort and his, and his physicality are so important. McEwen is the other player in foul trouble for Marquette. We mentioned Duke and Watson on the Providence side with four. Boy, they are just a little tight on that free throw. They've missed 11 tonight. And those things are like a virus. Once one guy misses them, it's like the other guy catches it. And he misses them. Get the same result. Howard comes up with it for three. And the quick hands that time by the yeah. big fella, Khalif Young. Jace Johnson is really giving great effort tonight on the glass. At a time they need him in such a physical battle, using his length and his seven, all seven feet of him. And then he's kicking it out for the three. Again, looking for that easy three after a rebound. But Providence hanging around to fight some more free throw shooting. Howard looking to turn the corner. Hangs can't get it. Great block out. Khalif Young. And Coach Cooley using the coach can call a timeout during live action only in the last two minutes. It's amazing that uh, he's getting what he wants. He's taking a full timeout. We got a brawl. Marquette's huddle up by one against Providence. What do you think they have to look out for for this Providence possession? Well, Providence by design is going inside. They may run their flex stuff. You never know. They may move a, run a counter out of that. But you can see a couple of Diallo maybe get some action. Posting up Duke. They've had success with that. Malik White doing his thing. And as you look at this, what an ending. I mean, this is the... The teams aren't turning it over. It's a physical battle. Both teams' defenses have played well. Credit Marquette. They have really, really battled when they've missed shots. They've got offensive rebounds. they found ways when it looked like, uh-oh, there goes Providence. They've battled back, and Providence didn't go away early in that second half. But I just kind of believe they're going inside. Both teams now in the double bonus. See the one timeout left for Providence, two for Marquette here down the stretch. In the zone. Marquette goes 2 3 zone. They never play 2 3 zone. See if that throws Providence off. Yes, yeah, did. That was the cross screen that they were looking for. Got to adjust on the fly, and there's the tip. McEwen caused that turnover. Oh, uh, good defensive play. Coming out of the timeout, they ran their man to man play. It wasn't there. Good, good call by Seaboard Jahowski and his staff to go zone there. See Rob Judson at the front of the bench, longtime head coach. They'll let Howard dribble out some time. Now seven to shoot. He'll take it in all the way. Challenging Watson that time. Here's Providence on the push. Wrapped it up. It'll be fire basketball. Wow. That was almost catastrophic. The leak White just loses it. He was trying to hold off. Brendan Bailey just loses it. Duke falls down and then is able to get tied up. Marquette calls its timeout. 
Yeah, they were back man there, I think, when they were lined up in man. So I think Coach Cooley called it. Good, good time out here. Again, you talk about the gamesmanship. The two coaches now. Ed Cooley's got to put in two plays. A man playing his own play. And he and Coach uh, Wojciechowski can do whatever he feels like because he knows, hey, last time we went zone, we got the turnover. We got the lead, you know, we protected the lead. Coach Cooley's got work to do. Do you feel like Marquette goes back to zone, or that was just the element of surprise? They play it very little. I would be surprised if they went back to it. But, on the other hand, I am undefeated this year, so I'd say he could do either. I can be right or wrong without being anything. The joy, joy's being semi-retired. <laughs> it's one of the benefits of sitting over here on the sideline. A couple of head coaches trying to figure out which team will show up here in the conference season? Out of bounds underneath going man to man. And they feed Diallo. Right and right. Good job hopping that right hand drive, forcing the bad pass. Sakara Min. He has been great here at the end. Watch how he shades his right hand, gets quick to it. And then we get a jump pass out of Diallo. And now you're in a situation where you got a foul. If you're a Providence, press and foul. Pipkins will check in. Bruce got four personal, so he's got to come out. It's a hard place to enter it, too. They let some time tick off. Now fouling right away. A ton of time ticking off before the foul was committed. Yeah, and you can you can get away with that when no matter what, it's gonna, still going to be a one possession game. If it was a two possession game, of course, that would be a little bit different. So maybe they're looking for a trap. Pippins just picked up his fourth, and it sends Bailey to the free throw line. One attempt there tonight. It's going to be interesting to me how Providence counters this back now, being such a methodical team, wanting to go inside. You really can't do that late game now when you've only got 18 seconds left on the game. You're down two, going to three. Good get a, team now for Bailey. You could get a quick middle ball screen, maybe get a, a guard going in, hoping that Marquette's saying, oh, we're not going to foul, we'll give you the easy two. But there's not many guys to foul on the Marquette team. Made a lot of people happy. If this isn't a friendly home court rim, I don't know what is. Plank sits on it. I wish my putts went in like that. Puts Marquette up by three. They are 0 for 4 from 3 this half, Providence is. So they have to go for the 3. I say waiting this long, and they got it. Here's Reeves for the tie. He gets it. Great play. Double stagger, fade the first screener. Tremendous play by it. We're seeing both these coaches do a heck of a job. And this is a great call because they're going for three. It's just taking too much time. You see, you see some misdirection. There's the double. And we just missed the big guy screening the other big guy in, hitting the three. And you know when the managers are jumping around on the end of the bench that happy? That it's a huge play. That they got it done and it's a draw. Big time play. But now you're going to see Marcus, Marcus Howard head down. Do you press if you're Ed Cooley? Do you just pick up man-to-man? -man? A lot of options here for you. Because you know if you just let Marcus Howard go one-on-one, -on -one, probably going to draw a foul. Or he can score not, you know, nine different ways. Yeah, and, yeah you got to try to deny him if you can the inbound. But let's go back to the AG, A.J. Reeves three and how significant that was. Number one, it was the first three-point make for Providence. Number two, he's 25 percent three-point shooter. For yeah, the first season. three in the second half. Um, it, you know, sometimes though, even though let's say he's that, so we know he's a 25 percent shooter. But when you know the play's coming for you, and it's just not out of the offense, 
He's just a little more confident. So here's the, the curl, and there's that screen right there on Brendan Bailey. Gets him enough room to hit the three. Well-designed play. And again, you're doing it for a guy that's shooting 25%, but they practice that. They know what they're looking for. Credit Coach Cooley. Knows it's going to be hard to foul. There's too many guys that can make foul shots in the Marquette team, even though they're probably having one of their worst nights. Great call, Coach. So they're going man. Now they're switching Reeves on to Marcus Howard. They're pre-switching. I'd say they're going to switch everything. Here's Howard on the run, trying to deny him, and they do. They're not going to get off to McEwen, trying to beat the buzzer. We got OT. Bonus basketball, Lisa. Woo! Tied at 67. We got another one when this one is done, Rob Stone. Oh, Lee's bonus ball in Milwaukee. Coming up next on FS1, it's Villanova at Creighton. This game is actually going to start now over on FS2. There's the talented freshman, Jeremiah Robinson Earl, number 16, Villanova on the road. Sold out Omaha, but first, let's take you back to Milwaukee for OT. Well, thank you, Rob. Overtime is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee, Providence Marquette couple of teams looking for a little bit of consistency and looking for another win here in the Big East. We got five more minutes to play. Tied at 67. We've seen a little bit of everything. This is a this is an impressive, impressive game. Both coaches doing a tremendous job. Marcus Howard with another big night. He's got 33, looking for more. 21 coming in the second half. He knows all about big games and big performances in this series against Providence. January 3rd, 2018, got a then school record and a then Big East record of 52 at the dunk. Getting 52 on the road. I mean, almost nobody does that. That game was 95 to 90 in overtime. So this series also knows a little bit about Marcus Howard having big nights, but also about a little extra basketball between these two programs. Go back the last four seasons, and Marquette has not lost in overtime. A perfect 10 and 0. That's an impressive number. Can't do much better than that. Out of 10 chances. The tip goes to Providence. Reeves, the tough two. How about the last two buckets for A.J. Reeves? Stepping up in an important time of the game? Sophomore? They want, McEwen threw it away. they want McEwen going left. His errors come dribbling to his left. He's much better going to his right. Well scouted, well documented. Good defensive play by Providence. And Marquette had a good action. They just didn't get it. it defended well. Trying to get Marcus Howard free. Friars has led it by as many as 11 in the first half. Marquette by as many as eight. Off the window for Watson. Who's playing with four personals. Howard hesitation. Oh, Watson. Oh, big bucket. He puts his shoulder right into the big man's chest. Steve Wojciechowski said it the best. Doesn't matter how big you are, little you are. If you're tough-minded, and there he takes contact, finishes the layup with his eyes up, fouls out. Yeah, Watson's not Watson. Done. Watson. So one big man for each team. Theo John and now Nate Watson have each fouled out. Well, Cleve Young is still available, and he's got great size. Thirteen points for Watson, nine in the second half. Ty 
Which was a go-to offensive threat at the beginning of the second half. Certainly a defensive presence. For such a slow moving game, this game's gonna end up, you know, at the start. It's gonna end up in the 80s, I think. I think somebody's gonna get Diallo with the floater. Providence gets the lead right back. 12 now for Diallo. Right about at his average. And here comes Zone out of Providence, switching defenses. Out to Elliott from the wing. Pops out. Marquette will keep it. Yeah, sometimes when you don't play much zone, hard to rebound out of the zone. You see the two guys scrapping for it. Tip, tip. You can make that call. You're better off than I am. Johnson, the quick feed to Howard, but he lost it. Uh, got position. Bob White, look out to Duke. The Friars have an answer. How about that? Just a burst of energy on defense into again more transition. Refuses to lose, just keeps winning his team back. Back the other way, high off the glass. White is hurt after that attempt. Howard putting on a show. Oh, oh what a... Chase Johnson coming in, and they have allowed the defense to, to, to battle the defensive rebounder. Great defense. And here's the lob in transition to Dukes. And right back at you. Marcus Howard. You can't stop him. You might not even be able to contain him. Well, the last play at the rim is now under official review. Three seconds jump ball. Yeah, it's a jump ball, 20 seconds. Officials give us the call on that. I think Ed clearly was asking for offensive pass or offensive uh, basket interference, offensive pass interference. Once again, the Vikings and Saints pop right in my head at game time. He said you'd get another reference. In. They're tied at 73 into the corner. Trying to lock up Howard, nowhere to go. Somehow I just feel, feel like he's going to end up with three out of this thing. Here's Marcus Howard. Was thinking about it. Howard, step back. Baseline. Oh. So anytime you get a situation where there's that much contention on every rebound, you're going to get those little fouls, the ticky-tack fouls. It's just been too much. And, and, and that's, that's a good play by the refs. It's a good move. Marquette fans don't like it. I understand that, but there's just been a melee on all these rebounds. And that's where fights start, and just crazy stuff, and especially in league play. 154, we still got a tie game. The only way we're getting the 80s to go double over time.
White knocks down the first. Yeah, a little extra bounce in a step. He was short on the last one. 71% on the season, right? No, 24. Shorter than. Now for White, one off of time, his career high. <laughs> That's Coach Cooley actually talking to us <laughs> across the way. Hey, Rob Stone, what do you got? Well, we're going to get you caught up on Creighton Villanova live right now on FS2. Three, it's a soccer score lab right now. 3-1 for the Blue Jays. Villanova, they've already attempted three triples. Let's update it, Lav. It's now 5-1. Wow. Okay. Excellent insight. <laughs> More from Lev at halftime, Lisa, I promise. Let's get you back out to Milwaukee. <laughs> I love it. You're right at home with the soccer score here, Rob Stone. We are 75 to 73, our score. We wouldn't be in overtime if A.J. Reeves didn't hit this shot towards the end of the second half, and the time was winding down. Pretty well contested. That's the great part about college basketball. Here's a sophomore, doesn't always shoot it that well. You see that bench going crazy. That enthusiasm and that fun, I just, I absolutely, this is why I'm one person as a fan loves this game. You can take it in a little bit differently on a night like tonight. With the huddle, every, all the coaches are encouraging them. The bench guys are talking. The fouled out guys are talking. Well, we saw Ed Cooley literally turn to us. What, what was he trying to tell us? I think he was saying, like, this is nuts. This is crazy. How about if we make a free throw? Conference play is here. And look who Providence has coming up. Right now, the top team in the Big East. It's so much easier for him. Butler, number six in the country. St. John's, which I'm sure is a great rivalry game. And then at Creighton, at Seton Hall. And then there's Nova. The number six ranking for Butler, by the way, the highest ranking in school history. On the other side, Marquette has Seton Hall, by the way, the preseason favorites in the Big East. Yeah, I have them tomorrow night on FS1 at Xavier. That should be a heck of a ball game in the Sintas Center. Well, I'll tell you what. Take the over if you can with Marquette, Seton Hall, Marcus Howard, and Miles Powell squaring off on games like that. Well, I tell you, I had a chance to guard Miles Powell last year, and he... He got buckets. Let's just push it that way. Marcus Howard, though, fantastic tonight. This is the guy, if you're Steve Wojcicki, and that Marquette fan, you want him with the ball. Imagine him. Ozo. Anna with a handoff to Howard. Looking for something. Here's Howard for three. Got it blocked. And Johnson again pursuing the rebound. That foul on that. Robert's foul for David. Personal foul. Again, like we talked about three, four possessions ago, when, when there's that challenge at the uh, for a rebound, that, you know, sometimes they call the ticky-tack stuff. And even though he's just trying to close down for the ball, they've been calling that to try and clean it up just most recently, but that's a tough one to go out on. He had, Duke's had two, David Duke had two really difficult calls on him tonight. One right in front of the Providence bench where Marcus Howard is just trying to unleash it. And he runs into a guy in the same one here. That's just too bad because he's an important, critical guy. Both Watson and Duke now out for Providence. Pipkins sitting with the four fouls. And Pipkins has not played much the second half. Partially because of White. Johnson, by the way, 0 for 4 from the free throw line. What a time to hit your first free throw. Yeah, if you're having a, you know, I mean, it's, are you going to pitch to the guy that's 5 for 5 or the guy that's 0 for 5? Because the guy 0 for 5 is more likely to get a hit. <laughs> How about that stat? I just made it up. Big hit. Here we go. at 75. Out to Reeves, who had the big three. He gets it over. Something's got it into A.J. Reeves tonight. <laughs> Another set for the 25% final shooter. 
Howard trying to force it. Here's Bailey for the tie. Punch, counter punch. Frazier's on his feet. Ali's on his feet. What a great Biggie's battle. In there. They had very few seconds. Holy cow. AJ Reeves, what a big, big three. Ed Cooley dialing him up. Great pass, right in rhythm. Second three of the night. And Marquette answering the bell. Good flash. Keeping the ball alive. Three more, baby. I mean. The energy in this crowd is terrific. We wondered what it would be like with, not, with the students not in session. And it was an earlier game, people just getting off of work, and it has turned out to be a, an exceptional basketball game. And I think they have a DJ. Everybody's got to have a DJ these days. Some of the atmosphere here at the five serve four. Wonderful new building. Marquette, if I make some noise, I can't hear you. Again, we'll get you out to Villanova and Creighton once this one is complete. We'll be next coming up on FS1. The glass, wow. the tip is good for Young. Diallo going to his right. Any shot at the rim's a good shot. Can't give up a three here. Just switch everything. Marquette trailing by two. Here's Elliott for the lead. Short. Good hustle. Providence will Providence. get it. Here's a little horns action. White throwing it back to Alpha Diallo. He drove, missed it. Tip in. Give the lead to Providence. Now we got 13.8. Marquette's got to press, got to foul. See if they can get a turnover here. And Providence has got to make some foul shots, too, if they get fouled. They sit ninth in the Big East. It's never been a strength this season for them. As a team coming into tonight, shooting 66% from back there, they've missed 12 free throws already in this game from the line. That gutty, gutty effort by Providence to be in this point. And then Juan Pipkins hasn't played much all night. Chance to really shine and be a hero. He's one of the free throw shooters you don't want to foul. Yeah, nothing but the bottom of the net there. Hasn't missed all season. Did I actually say that? Howard getting wrapped up. Out to Bailey. Three guys basically double team, or I'm sorry, triple team. And then you've got your center coming out. And now Brendan Bailey's got to step up and make foul shots. How about Juan Pickens' first miss of the season? Fifty percent foul shooter steps up there and. He's been doing it the whole time. He hasn't had many opportunities this year. Yeah. He's got a couple more. Two shots. He's three for six. Now five for eight on the season. Maybe we got to the 80s. Let's go. Let's keep going. And 
White will get another chance at the free throw line. And I'm not sure what happened there, how he got loose. Yeah, if you're Ed Cooley, get everybody away. I'd even have Diala off the box. Make one, miss one. Keep your fingers crossed. Providence is leaving a door open. Yeah, I'll be curious if he misses this one on purpose. Marquette calls its final timeout. Now both teams out of timeouts. Would you encourage him to do that? To miss I, on purpose? I would, I would consider it. We saw, remember Mike Krzyzewski did it in the national championship game against Butler when Gordy Hayward almost threw it in from half court. There's only 1.7 seconds left to get a quality shot off a miss. Let's check in one more time with Rob Stone, Rob. Hey, Lisa, we just want to remind you, live over on FS2 right now, it's Villanova and Creighton. Wildcats struggling from the floor early lab. They're just 3 of 12. That one coming up next live on FS1. The magic number is 70 for both teams. When Villanova holds teams under 70, they're 7 and 0. When the Blue Jays score 70 or more, they are 11 and 0. Keep a focus on the pace and tempo. Lisa, Tim, back to you guys with a big free throw coming up. Yeah, you can say that again. Yeah, if he misses it, maybe Diallo will uh, just kind of uh, jam the rebounder, so to speak, just kind of get in his way a little bit, crowd him a little bit. Miss Long, rebound to Bailey, that'll do it. A gutsy win on the road for Providence in overtime. What a four-game stretch for Ed Cooley and these young guys. A.J. Reed, the hero of the night. A.J. Reed, the sophomore off the bench, hitting that shot to tie it, to send it to overtime, and then in the extra session, his second three-point make of the game. A player who had shot 25% this year from three made the most of his call. The final score, 81 to 80 in overtime. Let's get you out to Villanova Creighton. For Tim Miles, I'm Lisa Byington. Enjoy, everyone.